Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. But, you know what won't be for very long? 2019. That's right, the year, and with it, an entire decade, are finally coming to a close. 2019, much like 18 and 17 and 16, though maybe not so much 15, was yet another great year for Skyrim's modding community, as a whole suite of new, DLC-sized creations were produced alongside a plethora of incredibly impressive, more humble projects. As has become a sort of tradition over on this channel, we're going to be spending today taking a look at five of the best. Now, like with any year, it's still incredibly difficult to pick a measly five mods out of the hundreds upon hundreds of noteworthy projects, but we're going to try to do that anyway. This year my criteria is fairly simple. It's the mods that I just personally like the most. Anyway, without further ado, let's do further. We'll be starting off today with an expansion-sized mod created by a team longtime fans of the channel know I'm pretty much in love with. Carved Brink by Haim Projects. Released in March of 2019, I actually gave this mod its own video back when it first dropped, which is something I rarely do, so you know this was a favorite of mine. Carved Brink sends the Dragonborn to a strange subplane of oblivion known as the Faceted Stones to search for a mysterious conjurer who's disappeared. Your journey will introduce you to a variety of new, stunning environments, a whole assortment of really unique quests, and a cast of intriguing characters. Including one particularly hilarious talking seashell. While your main objective here is to discover the whereabouts of that missing mage, you'll quickly become immersed in a whole assortment of other narratives surrounding the mysterious realm that is the Faceted Stones. And on top of the sort of primary quest line, there are some side quests that will help you uncover more about the lore behind this land. Altogether, expect to spend between 3 to 5 hours conquering Carved Brink, depending on how much of a completionist you feel like being. It's very difficult for me to measure the exact size of all of the new world space created, largely because the maps are in many ways not necessarily 2D, like they stack up vertically too, but if I had to guess, I'd say you've got maybe a couple of Black Reaches worth of content here. If I had to describe this mod in a single word, creative would be it. The world spaces we are given the chance to explore are nothing short of breathtaking. Utilizing new and old assets and some innovative lighting tricks, at times it feels like we're on alien planets. This creativity extends to the quests too. Rarely are we told to go here, kill X, report back for Y reward. But instead, the missions feel more akin to what we got back in Morrowind, where we're told to go out and actually look for things and piece together evidence and make discoveries in order to progress. It's a refreshing experience. Of course, last year in 2018, the developers behind Carved Brink, Haim Projects, also released Project AHO, a very similar mod that I've praised for pretty much all of the same reasons. Overall, Carved Brink is an impressive addition to the Nexus that serves as an excellent testament to what the modding community is capable of. Better yet, it's available on both Skyrim versions on PC and on the Xbox One. Next on our list, how on earth could we neglect Enderol, Forgotten Stories, by modding studio Shura AI? So, Forgotten Stories is a bit of a unique case, as it's not a standalone mod, but instead a DLC, as its developers call it, for an already existing other massive mod. You see, way back three years ago in 2016, Enderol Shards of Order was released by Sure AI. It was one of, if not the biggest mod ever dropped up until that point, garnering so much attention and interest that it even has its own Steam page, which is incredibly rare for a mod. The experience wasn't set in the Elder Scrolls universe. Instead, Enderol was set in its own fantasy world, with its own lore, history, and characters. The game specifically took place on a planet called Vin, and on a subcontinent named Enderol. To call Enderol a DLC-sized mod would have been an understatement. It was very much its own game. Its world size was around three-fourths that of Skyrim. There is around 30 to 100 hours worth of content, depending on how many side quests you were interested in, and Enderol boasted its own assortment of talented, professional-grade voice actors. It was humongous. Well, just this year, in February, the developers released Forgotten Stories, a 
DLC for Enderol, offering a variety of new quests, characters, items, classes, and even mechanics. Years later, Forgotten Stories contains much of the content the developers wanted to add to the original mod, but couldn't due to time limitations. Uniquely, Forgotten Stories is a bit unlike Dawnguard or Dragonborn, or more traditional Bethesda DLC, where it just sort of tacks on content. Instead, Forgotten Stories also introduces changes to the game's own main quest line, and injects new content in some ways that a new playthrough will be necessary to experience. Altogether, just completing the new side quests and visiting the new locations alone should run you about 12 hours, but chances are you're going to get a lot more fun than that, given the mention of mechanical changes and its encouragement of restarts. As a whole, Forgotten Stories is an amazing experience that easily warrants a reinstall of the mod it's based upon. Or, if you've never tried Enderall before, it represents the perfect opportunity to begin. Coming in at number 3, we have a mod that isn't quite like any of the others we've shown up to now. In of it, that it's not really an expansion. Like, it's not adding in any new lands, quests, or items. Instead, it's a purely technical work. Introducing iEquip, by the iEquip team. iEquip is fundamentally a UI hotkey mod that provides the perfect cure for Skyrim's oftentimes seemingly endless menus and inventory screens. It will allow the player to cycle through various weapons, shouts, spells, armors, potions, and really anything else you can put in your inventory in real time through key bindings, without ever needing to pause the game again. And fear not, because it also has controller support, which I'm using now. I personally think the best way for me to communicate how this mod works and what it does is just to show you some gameplay with it in action. As you can see, with iEquip installed, I'm able to cycle through my various items mid-combat, quite seamlessly. I'll admit it does take a little bit to learn and configure to your liking, which, by the way, the mod is insanely customizable. You can modify pretty much everything about the display, from the font type to the size to its position on your HUD. But once you've got everything tailored to the Dragonborn's preference, it will be hard not to love what iEquip can do. We spend a seriously tremendous amount of time navigating the game's various menus, and this will easily cut that by somewhere around 90 to 95%. If this sounds like something I'm really passionate about, it's because I am. After two years in development, the fact that something like this successfully released really does blow me away, due to the huge amount of scripting and coding complications the team had to overcome. It's not easy fundamentally overhauling a mechanic like this. This system is so helpful, I've said it before, but I hope Bethesda takes note and implements something similar in future titles as changing gear or drinking potions on the fly certainly beats freezing time to explore your journal or Pip-Boy or whatever. So, while it might not be introducing any new entire quest lines or taking us to foreign lands, iEquip certainly is a mod that still deserves your attention. For fourth spot, Wintersun, Faith of Skyrim by Naseon introduces an entire new religion system to the Elder Scrolls V. It does this largely by building upon and radically overhauling the game's vanilla blessing system. So, normally in Skyrim, the player can visit any shrine belonging to any one of the Nine Divines, and receive a unique blessing or power from said god. You can only have one at a time, and normally this is something like a plus 15% lockpicking increase, or the ability to use an extra shout once per day. Well, Wintersun expands that number of potential deities from 9 to about 50. Now you can choose not only to embrace the Elysian Pantheon, but a whole assortment of Daedric gods, old elven gods, even more obscure, less talked about beings, like those found in the Yokudin religion. New shrines, many boasting custom assets like models and textures, have of course been added in and scattered throughout Skyrim. Each of these divines now has not one, but two unique blessings tailored to their personality. But we'll get to that in a second. In order to actually be accepted by any given figure, you first may have to fulfill certain requirements. Some gods demand you've completed certain quests, killed so many of X enemy, behaved in a certain way. 
and some even have player race-based requirements that will totally lock you out of worshipping them in a given playthrough. Assuming you've met the criteria, once you approach a shrine and choose to embrace a faith, you'll be given an initial blessing, as well as provided a list of that god's tenets, or their likes and dislikes. Tenants, of course, vary dramatically between gods, but they're very much in line with what you might expect from each deity. The more benevolent folks will expect you to behave in a good, kind-hearted manner, whereas the more evil ones, well, not so much. Mephola, the Daedric goddess of plots and betrayal, likes it when you kill the innocent. Hermaeus Mora, god of knowledge, loves it when you read certain books. Talos likes it when you kill elves. You get the idea. Doing things that these gods appreciate will increase your favor with them. Favor is a new, incredibly important statistic to keep track of, as naturally over time, you are slowly but constantly losing favor with your given god. And if you lose too much of it, they will literally abandon you and revoke their blessings. So you always want to be doing things to keep them happy and keep your favor positive. Praying is a new activity you can engage in that offers a convenient way to increase your favor just enough every day to offset those natural losses. Though rarely is quite as efficient as just fulfilling tenants. If you're able to increase your favor faster than you lose it, once you've gotten enough of it, you'll eventually be considered a devotee of a certain faith, and gain an especially powerful second unique blessing that's typically far superior to the one that you're initially bestowed. But be careful, because again, if you lose too much favor, you can lose that blessing too. Let me give you an example. Take Kinnereth, goddess of the sky in the Elysian pantheon. Once you've accepted her as your deity, her initial blessing will grant you a stamina increase by 25 points, which is quite modest. But by exploring new locations, increasing your stamina personally, and learning specific shouts, you can increase your favor with Kinnereth. And eventually, once you're a devotee, you'll gain the Kinnereth's Emissary perk. This allows you to summon a sacred saber cat who will act as your mount for a limited time. Which is a lot cooler than plus 25 stamina, if you ask me. Now let's take a more taboo, less traditional god. Take Sithis, for example. His initial blessing will grant you plus 15% damage when sneaking. Because Sithis is traditionally thought as somewhat evil, or at least not a very good fellow, he likes it when you murder the innocent, sacrifice human hearts, or eat human flesh. Do those things and gain enough favor, and you'll eventually become one of Sithis's devotees. His devotee power, Call of the Void, will enable you to temporarily turn doors into portals to the void that suck your opponents into them and cause them to disappear. If you can't already tell, a lot of these devotee blessings are really unique creative things that are insanely fun to use, and provide an excellent incentive to continuing to worship your chosen deity. As a whole, a Naseon's Winter Sun Fates of Skyrim easily earned its spot in this video, and is bound to enhance any playthrough considerably. Not to mention its huge roleplaying potential. And finally, last on our list, we have the Guard's Armor Replacer by Nordwar UA. This was an extremely difficult choice to make, but all throughout this last year, Nordwar UA has consistently been posting some of the best armor mods available on the Nexus. And Guard's Armor Replacer is, in my opinion, his absolute best creation. Barely making the cutoff date for this video, having released in January of 2019, the mod creates new, totally unique sets of armor for the hold guards of each of Skyrim's holds, customized to reflect the culture and available materials of whatever hold they're in. No longer will all of Skyrim's protectors wear the exact same chainmail cuirass with minor variations in color. Now, their entire outfits are getting overhauled. Markarth's guards embrace an armor set fashioned out of the various dwarven metals the city has in abundance thanks to its history. Solitude, being the richest of Skyrim's provinces, has the most elegant and expensively dressed security. Eastmarch and the Pale, being Skyrim's coldest regions, now have guards dressed for their climate. The new attire options look stunning, and come in resolutions as high as 4K. If that was everything the mod did, it would already be quite impressive. But it goes even further. 
unique, especially well-decorated sets of armor will be given to the Dragonborn as a reward for becoming the Thane of Whiterun and or Hafingar. Furthermore, Ulfric's been given his own customized kit, and all of the Stormcloak soldiers have unique sets as well. Not to mention, a small arsenal of customized weapons and shields have also been added into the game's various inventory pools. Guard's Armor Replacer, or Gar for short, is easily one of my favorite armor mods really ever made for The Elder Scrolls V. And quite frankly, if it weren't for the fact that I was always making YouTube videos and wasn't so worried about confusing people, I'd probably have this mod active just about 24-7. Again, it's never easy filling out top 5 lists like this, but GAR definitely earned its position in this video. And with that, we are going to wrap up. My top 5 mods for the 2019 year. What a 365 days, and frankly, what a decade it's been. The modding community has done everything, from develop minor bug fixes, to creating entire new games out of Bethesda's engine in these last 10 years. And 2019 was just another excellent slice of that. Thanks so much for stopping by, everybody. What are your favorite creations of the year, and what upcoming mods have you the most excited for 2020? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.